The following program is a Town of Colony television production of the William K. Sanford Town Library. Welcome to Getting to Know You. My name is Joan Ash. Today we're going to be talking to Anya Leader Nagy. She is the Director of Community Engagement at the Albany Institute of History and Art. And we're going to be talking about upcoming and current exhibits, four current exhibits. They all end this June or July, so plenty of time to get to see them. So welcome, Anya. Thanks for having me, Joan. Now, you haven't been here in a while. I just want to say one thing. Congratulations since the last time you were here. You, I, I understand there's been an addition to your family. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yes. A, yes. a new daughter, <laughs> only one year old. <clears throat> so one thing I noticed about, we're going to talk about four exhibits mainly that are ongoing, or they're here till June or July. All four of these artists, there's sort of a local connection. I don't know. Is that on purpose or, I mean... One woman, um, Ruby Silvius, from the Hudson Valley, but she went to Sage in Siena. And of course, Walter Lunt Palmer was born and died in Albany. Um, Otto, Otto Plang, is that how you say his name? Uh, it's um, Otto Plow, he was yeah. German. Yep. And, and he, he lived, lived in, in Saratoga, Saratoga and he taught at Skidmore and he lived to be, what, 102 or something? He, yes, uh, 102. I think it's 102. And then the, um, there's one called Telling Her Story, it's about women's history. Um, in the Albany area, so there was all sort of a local connection. Is that was that on purpose, or do you try to keep? Part of the mission of the Albany Institute of History and Art is to highlight the art history and culture of uh, New York's uh, Hudson Valley, uh, Upper Hudson Valley, and so um, we often, when we do uh, work uh, with exhibitions, we try to have a connection oh, okay. um, to this region. Um, when our traveling shows come in, those don't necessarily have that direct tie, mm -hmm. but often complement works that we already have in the collection. For instance, several years ago we had a traveling show that featured um, the art and architecture design styles of chairs mm -hmm. um, and we have uh, a pretty significant furniture collection. Okay. So there is usually some tie and some of the chairs that were um, part of that exhibition were actually uh, manufactured or designed in uh, the capital region. All right. well, that's good. You try to have a local connection and we of do. course, I don't know if most people know this, but the Albany Institute has been around since what 1791 is that 1791 correct? that's where our roots go back to yes originally um, we were in New York City um, and we're kind of like a think tank for the New York State Legislature okay. and then we moved up to Albany when they right. moved up so as we talk about these exhibits you'll probably see some on the screen of the artists and their work that we're talking about the first one this one is here until this June. It'll be here till June 7th. It's been up for a while since last year, but it's called A Brilliant Bit of Color, the work of Walter Lont. So, am I saying his name right? Walter Lont Palmer, yes. So, and he was born and died in Albany. Mm -hmm. And what, who was he and how does he fit into the American uh, art history. I sure. Um, so Walter Long Palmer's uh, father was Erastus Dow Palmer, who is also part of our collection. He was a sculptor. And Erastus Dow Palmer was friends with and worked with um, the Hudson River School artists. Oh, okay. So Walter Long Palmer, when he was um, deciding if he wanted to be an artist, go into the art world, he had a father who was very well connected in that scene. Um, and he actually studied with Frederick Church, um, who lived in Olana and was one okay, of the yes. well-known Hudson River School artists. Um, so his um, exhibition is actually, it's one of our, we have one of the larger collections of his work uh, in the country. Uh, he painted prolifically. He was, he, we have his journals and um, his diaries. He was really an artist as um, a job. Um, and so he kept detailed records of um, the paintings he was working on, uh, who he was painting it for, what the cost was, the commission and things. Okay. Um, and the exhibit is laid out in a way that looks at the evolution of his um, artistic style. He is the generation after the Hudson River School artist. So he's artists. not considered Hudson River he's School? not considered okay. Hudson River School. But influenced by them. But he, def he certainly knew them, uh, studied under them, um, and was able to, was uh, familiar with that um, art world that they helped kind of create in the United States. States. 
Um, and so his work um, is almost in three parts in the exhibition. Um, it is first a um, series of detailed interior scenes. Um, and those interior scenes um, he painted with the use of photography, which was a new technology at the time that he was working. Um, and so he was um, painting like the inside of Tenbrook Mansion. Um, and he was painting um, details of the oriental carpets that were on the oh, floor okay. and things. Um, and so much so that uh, he eventually kind of got tired of the strain that that caused on him physically, his eyes okay, and now, everything. <clears throat> I haven't seen them. Are they very detailed? Very detailed. So um, I will be able to he, send... Mm -hmm. There's a painting of the rooms. In the, he would take right. photographs of the oh. rooms and then go back to his oh, studio okay. and using the photographs as reference oh, points okay, okay. be able to really get details of um, the wallpapers and the books oh, okay. and the clothes um, okay. and then after that period he actually traveled abroad and went to Venice um, and he has a series of Venetian scenes where it's much more uh, a looser kind yes, of I style. I saw online you can see if you go to the yes. Bowman Institute's website you can see some of these paintings are very there they are. They could seem not as intricate as. <laughs> not no. And actually, if you wanted to go into the website, they're calming. They're soothing. They're, they're <laughs> they are very popular. People um, love them now, and people loved them then. Okay. Um, and his other, um, what he was really known for was painting snow, um, and which sounds very silly. People kind of make a face when I say it, but. Um, well, the, on the online, I looked at the pictures. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, those winter scenes. They again, they're very. They are, um, they are, they can be very loose, but there's one called Road to Olana, um, and when I first saw it, I thought it was a photograph, um, because he was painting snow in all the shades of color that snow actually is. It's not just white. So it's blue, it and it's yellow, <laughs> and it's purple, and it's gray, uh -huh. and so he paints using those colors, and it made him... No, like known uh, across the United okay. States for being able to paint snow and they, those paintings still have a really strong impact on visitors, especially art students. Mm. They come in and they come into that space and they look at it and some of them just glow from um, the, the frame and they will sit, we, I ran into some um, visitors and they were specifically here to see the Palmer exhibition, specifically to see and visit certain paintings that they oh, really? knew might be there. Did they come from and out of the area? Time. Did they come from out of the area? I think they were locals. Oh, okay. Um, to spend time looking at the paintings. Well, I did look at a lot of the snow ones online. They're very, not just the ones you yep. have, but you can look them. Yeah. If you go to our website, um, we have a collections oh, tab okay. on our website and then you can search by artist name and then you can find um, the one that are digitized and available. So how come he's not more famous? Or is um, he in the art world? Is he sort of? You know what? I think um, he is getting more recognition now. Okay. Um, a lot of, he painted hundreds of paintings. It wasn't like he painted 10 paintings. Yeah, okay. He painted a lot. Um, maybe hundreds is wrong, but I think that he painted a lot. You're starting to see him come up. People are starting to have an appreciation for what he was able to do. Okay. Um, and so I think he's getting uh, a bit of a following. But again, we have a, a pretty strong collection okay. of him, and people are now starting to pay attention, uh, which is why when, we've had um, exhibitions um, showing his work in the past, but people still come to see this show specifically. Okay. Um, they are delighted to, for the chance to be okay. able to see him. And then this is here till June 7th, and this one's been up the longest, it's been up since last year, but so mm -hmm. the response obviously has been, some it's people very are just, popular. Some people are just sitting in front of the snow and it's just. Yeah, <laughs> it's really interesting, because um, he painted things that I think often were intended for public consum for, for, for consumption. Yeah. Um, and so he was painting with the idea that he would be um, appealing to people. Okay, so our next artist, this is started January 25th and is here until June 7th. Totally different than what you're just talking about. Totally different. <laughs> the yeah. artist's name is Ruby Silvius, and she well, is called Recycled and Refashioned. So why don't you just, before you, you will, we'll see some examples on the screen, but what kind of materials does she <laughs> use? She uh, uses things that people normally throw away. Okay. And so um, she is um, an artist who was trying to challenge herself to make art every day. 
And so when she was figuring out what that might look like, um, as she was kind of getting into a new part of her life, um, she uh, was decided that she would see if um, she was, talks about having a conversation with her sister, who is also an artist, and over a cup of tea, and they were trying to figure out, I wonder if we could actually do something with these tea bags. I know. Um, if, if you go online, or people will see that they're pretty amazing. What they're, they are absolutely <laughs> amazing. Um, so she actually um, will take used tea bags, empty, uh, have them dried, um, empty them out, iron them, and then use them as her canvas. And she would. Um, she has a book. I think it's 363 Days of Tea mm -hmm. that she um, uh, published, and it is her journaling on these um, uh, tea bags as canvas and it might be what she has for breakfast people mm. that she knows um, well, is uh, it, does each tea bag have one it's picture or they I, it look some like, some, it looked like some were like combined to yep. make a big some part. of them might be um, like a series like she has one where it's um, a scene of a road um, with some hay ba bales and I think she said that it was probably from the Kuksaki area where she lives huh. um, and uh, so those are a set of three tea bags, kind of making a larger, yeah. wider canvas. Um, but then she might do a series of um, bagels, or um, uh, flowers, or f shoes. Um, okay. And so she, <laughs> anything that inspires her, she's really, what she's very interested in is the idea of journaling, the idea of creating art. She likes small canvases so that when she is inspired, she can kind of just pull it out and work on it. So what else besides tea bags? I know she has, she has some shoes here made so, up. So yes. So she likes, um, so she has been collecting um, scrap paper for a long time mm -hmm. and I'm sure a lot of people can relate to the fact that you have something and you save it thinking, "What? well, I'm going to do something with this, but I don't know what I'm going to do she with it. She can come down to my desk and my office. I got <laughs> exactly. the papers all over. <laughs> Most people are like, oh, I, I, I get it. Um, and so she had these papers and she was trying to figure out, well, can I do something with them? And so she was at a party and someone had paper, like a collection of paper shoes. And she was thinking, I think I could do something like that. And so she went home and tried it with, uh, she has wallpaper scraps or origami paper scraps or, you know, banana leaf paper, like all sorts of things. And so she started creating these uh, shoes that are um, like life size. They're not miniature shoes. They are, I don't know, women's size eight or something kind well, of model. Well, the picture I'm looking at right now has, um I don't know what she used. I would have to go down and see. Banana leaf, Banana leaf. Uh, okay. paper <laughs> and handmade paper out of the go-go dots um, pumps, and that one she has a very strong social media presence, mm -hmm. and so she that's one of the reasons why she was challenging herself to do art every day because she was trying to post something on her social media accounts that oh, okay. her children had set up for her, mm -hmm. in order for her to you know um, have some accountability mm -hmm. about creating an art piece, and so that particular shoe was somehow noticed by Vogue Italia and was featured in um, their magazine really? and uh, it got a lot of great attention. Um, there was a little bit of confusion. She ended up getting a lot of um, contacts from people looking to actually buy and wear <laughs> the shoe. They didn't realize it was a paper shoe um, and oh. so, but we have um, one of the reasons why it's recycled and refashioned is that fashion often plays an influence in her work and she has um, her shoes we have dozens of shoes on view none of them look the same they are all made out of all paper okay. she cuts them uh, she um, arranges them she puts the soles on them they are amazing some of them are made out of um, scrap uh, bags like a Dunkin Donuts bag or something <laughs> where people go what but or some of them are from like a higher um, uh, quality paper like an origami paper okay. um, she had this is part of her kind of wearable series although these aren't wearable it's um, she has things um, like a series of or a Brahmi series uh, which are folded now, paper it, well, bras okay or a Brahmi or a Brahmi <laughs> Uh, well, there's one on the, you can see it online, 
made out of Nathan's famous hot dog wrappers or something. Yes. And I, yes. I, it was kind of cool looking. Then. Yes, she was working on a project and <laughs> she was doing a lot of origami yeah. and she was making origami um, bowls and she said, or cups, and she said, well, these look kind of like cups for a bra. And she was working on a project for a fundraiser for, um, I think, uh, maybe a breast cancer awareness mm -hmm. event. Um, and so she put, uh, she tried to, she's like, I can make something. And so she was reusing um, some handmade paper. Oh, yeah. um, and those ones are included in the exhibition. But it's so high end that you look at it, and it, it looks just like a lace bra. Okay. It does not look like the Nathan's bra, which also looks like a real bra <laughs> and is life size. Um, Okay. Um, and so people go, what? And it's it's very familiar material. You, people run into tea bags or scrap paper or food wrapper paper all the time, right. and they would never think to make yet think to make something out of it. And she she has full kimonos that she's made out of um, the used tea bags as well, oh, full. which full wearable kimonos, eight hundred tea bags um, to make one of them. She's a printmaker, so she'll bring what she um, assembles them, glues them, uh, she'll print on them. Um, they're, they're fascinating. Okay. Um, and they really have quite a presence in the exhibition space. Um, and so they're really, they're just great. Um, okay. And so she does uh, candy wrappers and she'll make little fashions out of candy wrappers. Please. She's just got this um, humor. Um, and an eye, and one of my favorites is um, she uses eggshells, and she paints the inside of eggshells, and um, they look amazing. She does residencies in different parts of the world, and one of her residencies was in Greece, and so when she was there, she made um, eggshells that looked like old Greek pottery. Oh, okay. um, <laughs> and it's really, kind of, it's so fascinating. So this has been up since January 25th, so it's been up for about a month. What, it sounds like the response has been... Uh, People love it. <laughs> they love it. They love it because um, they recognize the material. Um, someone who would not think that they might be able to connect to a contemporary art exhibit, because sometimes it's intimidating to think that maybe I'm not, in, maybe yeah. art isn't for me. But you go in and you see, okay, I recognize that candy wrapper. I recognize that bag. Who would have thought to do something like that with it? She's got a whole section of um, pistachio shells that she's doodled on. <laughs> and they're great. Um, and people are really fascinated. We're doing workshops with her. They've already sold out well, before oh, we even announced them. Really? And That's it amazing. is, it's amazing. People love it. She's got a great social media following. People can share what they have. Um, like when they go to a museum, sometimes you can't take pictures yeah. and, and that really hinders some of the word of mouth, um, uh, which helps generate people to come. And she's happy with people taking pictures of things. Um, and it's kind of intimate too, because it's a journal. So she has, she has register tape. I don't know if you're familiar with register tape. Uh, it's a, someone was getting rid of it. Most okay. of her things yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. because Cash people are getting rid of it. Exactly. So she ha she took a register tape and she started journaling on it and she would unroll the spool and journal on it. And she would do uh, this particular roll is what was on her um, di uh, dining room table breakfast table that morning or something so it's banana peels leftover um, uh, things uh, from the dinner the night before car keys you know it's it is it is a look at her life and we have it uh, kind of displayed it almost looks like like the Guggenheim because mm -hmm. uh, it's rolled out oh, okay. and hard to see otherwise but uh, <laughs> you really get to know her yeah. um, which I think is also an appeal. So she's up here doing programs with you guys. So what she's is doing gallery talks, she's doing programs. We're going to have her at the museum on Earth Day. Uh, it is the 50th anniversary of Earth Day this year. She will be at the museum painting on things that people bring her. All right, so so if you want to bring a soda bottle for her to paint on sure. or something <laughs> we're going to try and get 50 things done in the couple hours that she's okay. going to be on. So now what is she like? It sounds like she's she's very she's interesting great. person. <laughs> great, she's very um, she's very um, calm and uh, thoughtful and thorough, and she is okay. awake. Um, doing all these things all right. like she's got lots of energy lots of ideas her brain's always going all right well I'd have to come to, I have to see this kimono made out of you do tea bags. there's there's 
four of them. Oh, on four view. of them. There's okay. four of them on view. All right. The blue one, I think, is the 800. One. So the next exhibit, I mean, we could talk about this one all day. I think. No, I know. <laughs> the next one here is called "Telling Her Story." Um, it's there, it's just opened about a month ago. It's there till June seventh, and this is about women's history in the Capital District. Yep. So telling. Yep. What, what tells yeah. That. Um, so telling her stories, um, new acquisitions. It's presented by Bank of America, and the museum, like we talked about earlier, has um, a mission to uh, collect and preserve the history, art, and culture of this region. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and so we are always adding new things to our museum collection, um, but. Just because we add it to the collection doesn't mean it, it goes on view immediately. So we will collect um, papers or paintings or fashion or whatever that might come to us, uh, might... Uh, but you'll use someday. That our, our, goal, our goal as the museum is to be able to um, maintain that for future researchers and interpretation um, down the road. Um, and so looking at what's around and being that collecting repository. Um, so anything that's in the museum's collection, museums maybe, maybe have 15% of their own collection on view at any time. And so we just have a, a lot. That's part, that's part of our role. You guys have a whole warehouse. It, it, we have a, an off-site <laughs> warehouse. We have a very large collections um, uh, storage area on site. Um, we have a million documents in the library collection alone, you know, lots of different things. So this um, is one of the shows that we are taking time to show some of the things that we have collected into the museum's collection in the last couple years. And since it's the um, 100th anniversary of women's suffrage, um, museum staff has been thinking about um, what that could mean for programming and exhibitions in 2020. You know, how to highlight women. Mm -hmm. um, and so when we were thinking about this new um, exhibition, we thought, wouldn't it be great to talk about what we've acquired that is connected to the women of the capital region. But these are all recently acquired. Yes, in the last couple years. And so you'll notice that there are, um, there's lots of different um, stories that um, talk about the region and the women who lived and worked here um, throughout the different counties. Um, you'll see that there's new uh, contemporary art that has been collected. Um, that's one of the things so that we do. These are all on display as all part of, them, of this, right? Yep, right. absolutely. We've got two rooms that are, in, um, one of them is focusing more on the contemporary art mm -hmm. aspect, um, new th pieces to our collection um, that are looking at female artists in this region. Um, and then our other room um, is looking at, um, it has a more of a, an eclectic kind of collection. Um, the might include um, dresses from Ursula of Switzerland. Oh, okay. You know, that's something that has a, had a uh, real impact in the region. A lot of um, uh, women in the area know Ursula. So, um, they wore Ursula's dresses for <laughs> their weddings that they attended, yeah. their children's weddings. It's a name that locally is, is very strong, but internationally is, is very oh, okay. strong as well. And so the factory is located in Waterford. Um, and so thinking about the story of Ursula and how these objects that are now in our collection are able are they, to tell the story. Is that still in business? Mm hmm. Okay. Absolutely. Right. Um, and so, um, thinking about that, we're also looking at some of the, um, uh, like the writers um, or the radio personalities. Or I know you have a whole collection from, was it Elaine Drews? From yep. the, she had a radio show in the 50s. Absolutely. And, so, we have uh, scrapbooks that belonged to Elaine Drews and um, outline some of the programs and projects that she worked on as a female broadcaster um, and a woman who was working uh, in was early radio. There weren't probably that many women on the radio. Was it? It's really fascinating. I mean, we already know about um, the Schenectady areas uh, and um, this region's uh, influence in being early radio, early television, mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. And so to be able to add uh, the information that she has um, that she collected in her scrapbooks is really fascinating. And you also have the I guess it's a tragic story. Clara Rathbone, a lot of her, she was, we'll tell 
she was. Uh, <laughs> so Clara Harris Rathbone um, was from Albany, um, and she um, grew up in like political circles, um, and um, was known in her later part of her life as being. Um, with her fiance, she and her fiance were sitting with um, President Abraham Lincoln and his wife uh, in uh, Ford's Theater when he was um, uh, when he was shot. Uh, okay. And, and we, what we have is we have a lot of her personal materials now that descended through the family, um, and she's from this region. She that changed their lot. It changed the world, but it changed their lives. Yeah. Um, they, uh, so she has, um, she was friendly with the, the president and his wife. And so they have, she, right now we have her scrapbook, um, and it's open to a page where it's, um, you know, the cards that the doctors were sending to each other with updates of the president's health after yeah, he, he was, was shot. He was across the street. The and so she has those kinds of things um, out there. So um, uh, she has um, her family papers. She has um, the things about her children and what happened to her afterwards. Um, she, um, her, since her husband and she were in the um, uh, the booth when it happened, uh, he actually um, was injured at that point. Um, okay. I think, I want to say that he was cut in his upper arm. He received a very significant injury um, and bled quite a bit. Um, and uh, it is considered now that he probably had a PTSD uh, well, reaction to up, the event. He ended up murdering his, his wife. He ended up murdering oh, her okay. when they were abroad in Germany um, and uh, living there um, several, like, uh, maybe 15 years later. Um, and so... It, it is very it is a very tragic story okay, he was incarcerated uh, he was um, he was um, put into an insane asylum I think and he died there in Germany it is lots of and all her stuff is part of this we have okay. uh, her things um, right. uh, photographs and kind of looking at her life of what a person living in DC in the 1860s and then afterwards um, uh, dealing with this would have uh, what what her record is and so people who are interested in of course um, the history of Abraham Lincoln uh, yeah, and uh, that would be very interested in seeing some of this kind of stuff, but it's uh, there's a lot of research okay. possibilities. And then finally, too. this just opened in December. It's, it's there till July, July 5th. I think I said his name wrong before. The works of Otto Plow, Otto Plow mm -hmm. um, who ended up teaching at Skidmore. He lived in Saratoga until he was 102, but you're only concentrating on his work in the Southwest, sort of a, a lot yeah. of American artists gravitated by George O'Keefe is the most famous, mm -hmm. but he, he was part of that. So he um, was originally born in Germany, and he came with his family to the United States um, and um, went back as a adolescent to go and learn um, uh, art in the German art schools, um, lived with his grandparents and things um, in the right around the time of um, World War I. Uh, because of his affiliation as an American, he was put under house arrest while he was there. Um, and so uh, eventually he came back to the United States. When he came back, he was very interested in exploring the western part of the United States, specifically the southwest. And he did follow that same kind of trajectory of other artists in the, in the United States at that time. Um, and he brought with him kind of this German modern painting style um, that he had acquired while he was over in Germany. And so while he was traveling, he ended up going to um, uh, the Laguna sort of, Pueblo. It's like sort of that expressionist kind of stuff. It's very, there's lots of solid colors, um, lots of bright colors. Um, the collection that we have um, was assembled by um, a collector, um, Albert Roberts, who um, earlier in uh, last fall, he we had um, hosted a recently discovered um, Van Dyke oil sketch that Albert Roberts had discovered in a, uh, a at a barn sale or something in the in the Hudson River <laughs> like an Valley. Uh, it's it's one of those almost like urban myths uh, of you've pay, you found a unknown work by a master, oh, yeah. 
in a barn and it has like bird droppings on it kind of thing um and they but paid like ten dollars it. more than that but not <laughs> what it's not what it's worth and um it so it's been fascinating so he has been working with the museum in general he we have a long relationship with right. them uh, with him and um so he loves finding artists he loves finding uncovered artists and un underappreciated artists and so he had actually met Otto Plow um, and had been collecting his work um, he is re he has it's a promised gift to the museum of uh, artwork by someone who lived a lot of their life in Saratoga County yeah, when did he go up to Saratoga uh, he, mo I think he was there for a long in time the, so he was there from like the 40s on I that. think so. Oh, okay. like so he was, for a long time was he famous during his lifetime or? Um, he had some exhibitions all right. But not, at, he wasn't a self promoter. In the same way that, like, um, Walter Long Palmer, he knew the business yeah. of art. He knew that he needed to promote himself. He, like, if you, what's funny is our collection of his father's work has a lot of uh, photographs of his father's sculpture so that his father can promote his sculpture. Okay. <laughs> he was very quiet. He didn't do a lot of that. Um, and so he, I don't, he doesn't have the name recognition. Um, of things, but this, show, he went to the Laguna Pueblo area and stayed at Laguna Pueblo and painted both the residents during a first um, uh, visit and then the landscapes at a second visit, both in the early 1920s. Okay. Um, he did have an exhibition um, uh, in that area at one of the museums that was down there. Um, and he, it is um, just a lot it's it's the colors are just very bright we're actually what's interesting about this is we're at the point where we are using this as an opportunity to learn more about him okay you know uh it's not he's not an artist that you google and find out a bunch of things <laughs> about um and so trying to um use this new um collection. promise gift yeah. this collection to figure out who he was as an artist what do his papers say what was it, what were his styles what other things did he work on this is just a sampling of some of the work that he did um and he worked on um like uh well, doesn't skidmore have a lot magazine of his, covers he, he and taught stuff. At skidmore didn't he Do i they think have he a taught, lot of his stuff? i think he taught german oh uh, okay at skidmore. He, wasn't there, okay. he wasn't doing art oh my, all right. so that's uh he loved poetry yeah, he, that's okay. why it's almost like a hidden kind of so um we are using the opportunity um um, of this to hopefully add more information about him oh, okay. so that we know more um, about him as well. So um, it's kind of a nice opportunity to do some research, research on the people who are in the portraits, for instance. We've been working with um, different, um, uh, like trying to figure out uh, what's on the paintings. Can we figure out who this person is? You know, um, because people are, aren't just interested yeah. in the art for art's sake of the paint on the on the canvas but um who is it who was living there so this has been up for two months what's the re what's the response been and this is i'll just tell people this has been this will be here till july 5th what's the response been to this sort of unknown i think that a lot of the um people who are really interested in the show in particular are the um, people with a background in art, okay. they recognize that he has kind of an evolving, I'm learning about who I am as an artist feel on a lot of these canvases. Um, you see several of the same scenes painted a couple of times. Like he's sort of working it out. Um, there is a little bit of a discussion uh, about what he did in terms of commercial art later. Um, I think he did set designs for the Zigfield Follies in okay. New York City. <laughs> like he was an, he was uh, an artistic So you guys person. are sort of solving a it's, of it's one of those things where it's not an exhibition that says here we have all the answers yeah. but it's kind of a this is it's almost like a this is new to our collection okay. this is what we know and what we can tell you right now is mostly about the art part how does he fit in with the Georgia O'Keeffe's of the world um, that he is that you probably haven't heard about him but he clearly painted quite a bit he has got these really striking um, paintings that he's done um, and so what can we then learn for future information okay well we've gone over on our time <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> so um, those are the four current exhibits they're all there till June or July um, 
There's also the ongoing Hudson River. It's always been popular. Always popular. Always been popular. Been there since 2017, still going strong. Still going strong. I still get people from California and come in to see that show. And if you go to the um, online, on the web website, there's a thing called the um, online exhibits. Mm -hmm. The Hudson River School one is pretty amazing. You can learn all about, not just see the paintings, you can learn all about the artists, their work, how they did it, the, 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 um, the themes, the style. It's, whoever put that together, it was, it's really, really good. And then there's also online from a couple years ago, the, the Capital District and 50 Objects, all 50 are there, you can read about them. So, so we, and then maybe next time we'll talk about this. The Institute has all kinds of programs, education programs, family programs. You can do art with the artists. You can do you have vacation art break, adult art workshops. So go to their website, Albany Institute org. Dot, dot org, and there, you, there's more. So thank you. And uh, um, so these four exhibits sound like you're going to have a good year this year up until... It's going to be fun. Okay. It's a fun year. We're very interested in environment and women, and uh, there's so many things okay. to talk about. And we'll see you next time on Getting to Know You.